Here we go. Yeah, I'm saying it's recording. Good. Yeah, it is certain he is that. Hello, Charlie Menses. Hello, Sven. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good here in Edinburgh. We just had a wonderful conversation with Alice and you and me, and we had some good fun. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. You know, we've been doing a lot of things together, you and me, and your boat. Yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> so tell me, Bab, where are you? Well, I'm in Gerlache. Um, I, live, I live in a boat, a 16 meter junk. And I've been living in isolation, you could say, for 20 years. <laughs> so this isolation moving through is not that unusual, but it's also profoundly different because it doesn't have the elements of freedom in it that I'm used to. So I'll just show you the view out, out my window. This is out of my starboard window, looking up Loch Lochy. I think you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. And then I don't know if you'll see much out of my other window. That's looking over towards uh, Ben Nevis, which is covering cloud this morning. It's the first morning it's been covering cloud for about a fortnight. And Anoch Moor and Anoch Beg, where you can just see that white streak of snow is the remnants of the bottom part of the ski run. So there we are. We have the location. So I'll try and prop this phone back up again. There we go. So whenever you wake up in the morning and have your cup of coffee, you just sit there and you can choose between the two views, either Loch Lochy or Ben Nevis. And... Well, if I'm sitting, I usually don't have my coffee here. I usually have my coffee down in, uh, in the main saloon and um, I'll sort of switch on the radio and um, just chill out a wee bit there. Then I climb up here to catch up on laptop, Facebook and stuff and enjoy the view. That sounds great. Mm. What do you got for me, man? What have I got for you? Yeah. Um, well, I have various things. I've got two books. I've always got piles of books. I should try and get them all into one. Uh, I've got a book of poetry here, some poetry. And um, recently, well, just recently, it was about two weeks ago, uh, in this lockdown business, I went, um, I walked along the canal. Uh, I love the, the Caledon Canals here. And I was walking along the Cana Caledon Canal on my right-hand side and my left-hand side was a river screen. And I climbed down the bank into this lovely area under massive, mature beech trees. And the ground was nothing but beech nut kernels, just brown. And, uh, and I sat there and, and there was a bit of bedrock poking up from the river and out the river bank and it created this whorl in the water it was an elliptical it's sort of whirlpool and i was sitting there just sort of dealing with this whole isolation thing and thinking about every morning i phone my daughter and hamish my grandson and um we have a good blether and he gaga i was how we, good morning gaga he calls me gaga you know so i was sitting there thinking about all this and i went and i realized wow I might never ever see them again. This is possible. So, um, so out of that came this project and I'll just read what I've been putting together. I have been doing a lot of dreaming recently, some from the Dark Rider and some from the other place. I was awake dreaming on the banks of the River Spin near me under some old beech trees observing a back eddy where the river met bedrock. There was a strong elliptical whirlpool where sticks, leaves and foamy bubbles were trapped for a while. And I felt a bit trapped too in this lockdown and virus, realizing that I may never see Hamish. Uh, what has happened? Uh, Council hold and decline. Ah, that's what I just, that was Rona trying to get in touch. I've just declined her. So I was sitting, um, feeling a bit trapped, realizing that I may never see Hamish, Rona, Dougal, and Mia ever again. The sun shone. I stood up. I just wanted to walk and not stop walking till I got back. I am energized and it has led to this something for everyone. A way forward 
in love, compassion and gratitude. An invitation. Walking back to Hamish is an idea for a journey, a blog with the potential to raise funding for a relative cause. Maybe walking forward to Hamish is a more appropriate title, i.e. walking forward for everyone, finding the way, a new way. After all, it is the old way that got us here and the old way will only get us deeper in the mire. I have worked on a route from here to Aaron Tully, on the hill by Path and Riverbank. It gets very interesting after Rannoch, via Erechte, Gary, Tummel and Tay. Lots of hill paths, not very direct, but time is not as important as where the path takes us and why it existed and evolved. A deep story about people and landscape, politics and conversations. It is all as big as we have the capacity to hold. It can only be done when the lockdown is eased, but we must strike when the iron is hot. I can do the walk, but think that to do justice to the potential needs a dedicated team sharing the same intentions. This is an invitation to be part of that team where you can explore and express your feelings and ideas, where we can help and learn from each other and maybe walk part of the way with me. Maybe this is just a beginning. What do you think? And I got a lovely response from a very dear friend. Dear Charlie, I'm intrigued. Please send Map and more of your dreamings. So good that the river moved you like that. Maybe sometimes the traps do become places of deepening and surprising discoveries. I'm finding it kind of like that. Weird and wonderfully quiet. The spring is so exquisite. I feel I've never experienced one before. There is so much pink and lacy white. A newborn luminous green outside my windows. It's more than I can get my heart around. How good is that? Send me the names when you can. We will hug our families again. And the woman that wrote that was that woman you experienced our meeting in the canal that morning, remember, a few years ago? Do you remember? I remember. I, have you, we were sitting drinking coffee and we were just about saying farewell. We were sitting by the canal. You had your, we thought we should invite you into our apartment. You said, no, no. I like to find my my car and sitting around there and then by the van and then you we had the coffee, we just about to say for well. And I never mm -hmm. seen a woman going like that. It was like she just came into you and just hugged you like you there was so much love in that. And and, and you and her had forgotten our existence in the same moment. You sort of yeah, 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 bye bye. That was <laughs> that was awesome. She really came into right into your face. It was Brilliant. It was lovely, Charlie. I of course. Love yeah, 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 yeah. But thank you for, for the words. Mm. So that's where that's where my dreaming's got me. <laughs> I've dreamt my way into it and I have to somehow there the dream my way out of it too. Um very challenging. Very challenging. Um it's very uh it's very challenging actually. I've spent lots of time on my own walking in the hills. I used to take three months off every summer and and just walk. So that I'm I'm very very happy and content and completely that's where I go for peace and quiet and safety and security. And and after taking up this idea and and giving the idea to a few people, some people have said, Yeah, we'd we'd love to come and walk with you and I've gone, Wow. That's a real challenge for me. How do I walk with other people and share what I have? And um, and wow, how's this going to be? You know, um, it's yeah, it's, it's it's really shaking me up quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, what's his name? The guy that walks across the U.S. Um... And he and he's just followed by a lot of people, but the main what? 
I don't know. I haven't. A clue. That, it's a it's a movie. It's um, it's with Tom Hanks, but he's he's walking across the U.S. and what yeah. what he's doing is he doesn't take he doesn't take care of all the people who's following him. He's, mm -hmm. He just have his own thing going, and then they're behind him. Yeah, and that yeah. could be a solution for you that you do what you normally do all by yourself, and let these. Whatever I I I heard you say something about three very powerful women. Let them have what they have behind you. You you just go on your path. But Charlie, yeah. mm -hmm. inspired by that, I just going to say to you that I'm here in Scotland because I want to do things in the world, right? I want to I want to be in the world now. I I'm not I'm not away from the world as I was in Copenhagen. I was sort of getting bitter, bitter and 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 feeling left over and there was mm. there was a dream i had when i was a young man that was when when i was out in the in the hills very beautiful hills in denmark soft hills not like like ben nevis but very soft with green pasture that like green um, grass all around people were sitting there enjoying themselves talking white shirts beautiful dresses and on on the sky just over my head, there was a falcon wow. going in big circles. And mm. suddenly, behind the falcon, there came an eagle. And this oh. beautiful, beautiful big eagle started chasing the falcon. And I was mm. thinking, oh, that's amazing. And I was yeah. trying to make all the people sitting on the grass looking up. They didn't. They were so yeah. interested in the conversations and everything. They just sat there and talked. And suddenly, when they came so close to each other that the eagle actually cat sort of had its beak around the tail of the falcon. Wow. The chair transformed into a blue and a, and, and a red car. Wow. And in that moment, when the, when the red car sort of started flying very softly towards the, the there was a beach there people started noticing this red car and it ran down to road to red car but i was wondering what happened to the people in the blue car that was just floating out towards the ocean mm. and that dream i had it several times when i was a young man just make me realize I have to step into the world, Charlie. You have to be there like you do now. You walk right from wherever it, it's going to take you and see yeah. the world. It's, it's crying for messages like yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to go out there and, um, and just face what comes up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the interesting what you talked about that, uh, the falcon and the eagle. I had a very profound, beautiful experience uh, years ago, this was in the 1960s, and I was way up in Cape Wrath on this hill called Ben Jerug, just a big round hill, 150 square miles of no habitation. And I, I had a raven, and I always hear, ravens are always around. Raven's my bird, you know? If I walk through the hill in Sutherland, ah, ah, yes, you've clocked me. You, it's there. I had this raven that looked up and there was a pair of ravens and a pair of eagles. And it's a beautiful morning, so I just lay down on the ground and watched them. And they were mobbing each other as they do, you know, the ravens are saying, this is my patch and the, and the eagles are saying, get the hell out of the road, you know, that sort of thing, flying around. And I watched this for a while and eventually uh, I realised that there was only one eagle the other eagle had gone. And these two ravens, ravens are fantastic. They're clowns when they fly, you know, they can fall and tumble. And they're falling and tumbling and mobbing this eagle and giving it a hard time. And I watched, and um, then I noticed this sort of dot way, way above this, the eagle and the, and the two ravens. And this dot became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, I heard this roaring sound and it was the other eagle stooping on the ravens and the roaring sound was a wind coming through its feathers and the two ravens hit the ground <laughs> and stayed there 
and the pair of eagles just found the thermal and drifted off. And I never get that incredible gift of being able to see something like that. And it actually came up and 